I strapped on the harvest basket just like the workers would and got out on the side of the mountain to harvest coffee. So what are you guys thinking right now as you're trying to harvest just like the harvesters would? I'm thinking this would be a really hard job. And even after all of that, I still don't buy Starbucks coffee. Do you enjoy drinking coffee? Let me know in the comments section below. Because I personally have never really liked coffee. Now, I, there are times that I would drink coffee when I'm driving on a long trip and I just needed that caffeine boost to keep me alert and awake. However, I did have this one experience that completely changed my perspective on coffee forever. And it happened during a trip that my family and I took to Costa Rica. While we were there, we visited Finca Rosa Blanca. It is a farm that is located in the mountain slopes of the Puez and Barva volcano region. And this farm not only grows coffee, it grows it organically through sustainable farming practices. And one of the neat things that we learned while touring this farm is that they have over 5,000 species of indigenous plants that are interplanted with their coffee, many of which are common household plants that you may have in your house. This is a small plantation uh, that we are talking about, approximately uh, 40 acres of coffee what we have, okay? Uh, organic, as I mentioned before. So every single plant and every single tree that we have here have been planted on purpose with a purpose. For example, left and right, you will see different types of plants. Where we have, for example, uh, the monst monstera, or uh, people commonly call the Swiss cheese plant, okay? Because of the <laughs> holes on the leaves, as you can see. They have the characteristic, this is natural, this is not made by the insects or something like that, okay? This is all natural. Uh, then we have the calatheas, or people commonly call uh, zebra plants, because of the stripe on the leaves, okay? They have this characteristic on the leaves, um, so people commonly call the zebra plants. Uh, I'm sure you have this at home as well, uh, as a house plant, right? Uh, this is a plant that we also export from Costa Rica, or from tropical countries, that um, would be possible to find it in your country as well, okay? So to control the erosion, we are working with these plants. Calathea, Monstera, Wild Iris, they were planted as a barrier. All the way in the edge of the plantation, this is what we call living fences for erosion control. To hold what the water is trying to wash away. Talking about leaves, fruit, flower, branches, all of this is going to be held by these plants. So with this we try to control the erosion in the plantation, okay? So living fences for erosion control. Protection and decoration at the same time they uh -huh. decorate a lot you see yeah. and wow that was a neat experience for sure and it definitely gave me a greater level of appreciation for coffee as well as for coffee farming That sound right there brings back so many memories of my grandfather sitting at the breakfast table, you know, stirring up his coffee. And that's where my love of coffee has come from. I've been drinking coffee probably since I was five or seven years old, but thanks to my grandfather. And it's just been a part of my life. And lots of memories have been made just sitting around drinking a cup of coffee. And while we were in Costa Rica, 
I got to learn a little more about coffee and it was really, really interesting and made me love coffee even more. And during our time in Costa Rica, we visited a second coffee farm. This one was not a biodiverse farm, but the coffee grown there was grown organically. The name of this farm was Al Salsia, and it's Starbucks only farm that they own. And it sat right on top of the mountains with a gorgeous view. And looking back to 2019, it's crazy to see how much the kids have grown up and changed so much. Watching them plant the little coffee beans, seeds, and it was fun that they got to do it. So it's called coffee with the parchment and it looks like peanuts, right? Yeah. Okay, so we're not going to peel it off because we in Costa Rica plant them like this. There's still a couple more of layers. So the one you're seeing right now, that's called parchment. And if you see the bean has a line in the middle where it's kind of open. You see it? Yes? Okay. So we're gonna plant it with that line looking up to the sky. So it's gonna grow up and not down. Okay? So you take the bean, put it in one of the bottom holes. Looking up, put it there. Good job. Now you're gonna cover it with the soil on top. Okay? So you cover it. Put the soil on top. Good job. Perfect. High, high five. five. Give her a high five. Good job. Way to okay. go, Micah. Yes, two months later we see the soldier, right? So green uniform, a helmet, and stand in. In the next week, the parchment and the silver skin will drop off. And by that time, it looks kind of like this. You can see how it's open. Mm -hmm. It just dropped off the parchment. There's still the silver skin. When they're one year old, they will look something like to be something like this. This is like six months and a year. So when they're one year old, we take this off and they're ready to be planted in the coffee fields. They will say goodbye to the nursery, be planted there, and then you gotta wait, okay? So it's a hard business because it takes around three to five years to have your first harvest. And it's only one harvest a year. Now it's a tree, it's not a bush. I know it looks like bushes when you see the coffee fields, they look like bushes, but they're trees. They can even get 20 to 30 meters on height. So we need to prune them. And they're pruned because they're trees, they have branches. The branch of the tree is called bandola. And on the bandolas, they're gonna grow the well, the leaves, the flowers, and the cherries. But in the same spot where a cherry grows, it will never ever again grow another cherry in the same spot. No. So that means that during the years, we're losing coffee, right? Oh. We need to prune them to produce new vandalas and keep giving new coffee. At the same time, I will maintain them smaller. And it was really neat on the tour. I got to experience putting on the harvest baskets like the workers in the field would do and walk around and try and find all the red cherries. We're gonna do exactly the same. So oh, this is the thing. The more coffee you pick, the more money you get. So the average is one cajuela per person per hour. Oh, wow. Okay, so in eight hours, you should do at least in cajuelas. That's the average. I have seen people doing 40 to 70. Wow. Yes, when I did it, one in eight hours, I'm giving the tours, that's it, okay? It's a really hard job. Yeah. I don't really know how they do it, it's just practice. And well, of course, a lot of these people have done it for many years. Yeah. Okay, just don't pull everything. Remember, only, only the right the ones. ones. Only really red ones. This is all red coffee. Let's go. There's not gonna be as much because we're not in the season yet, but. Are you finding some guys? So what are you guys thinking right now as you're trying to harvest just like the harvesters would? I'm thinking this would be a really hard job. There's just not a bunch of red ones. Like she said, it's not really the season yet. Come here. So you find some that are not so great looking. I did find this one. The skin peeled off a little bit, but. And with the terrain being sloped, it makes it even more challenging trying to harvest right here. You're having to worry about trying to balance at the same time that you're looking to harvest uh, the, the coffee. So 
Now, if That's they were pretty all, interesting. If they were all red, if the majority of them were red, I could see where you could go really fast. So see right here, like if these were all red, it would be easy to grab them all. And But if you had to pick and choose each one, it would definitely take a lot longer. Find any more, Micah? I can find one. You just find one? Uh, all right, take it to mommy. And while I was there, we got to see how they washed and processed the coffee. And the tour ended with a tasting. Just a little one coming through. Mommy, that's too hot. I know. That's too hot. I've given it to them black thinking they wouldn't like it. And it's like, mm, this is good. I'm like, <laughs> okay, first step, smell. It smells good. <laughs> oh. it smells wonderful. I'm doing it wrong. Has, oh, did I do it wrong again? You just do it like this. I smell kind of mm, like that? dark chocolate. How's your smell? Yeah. Dark chocolate. Oh, get your head in there. Really get the head in there. Anyone else? Mm. How's it smell, Josiah? It smells good. It smells good. <laughs> it smells good. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is unpolite. Usually, it's like our grandmothers, when they give us soup, it's like, don't do that, you know, slurping. So, the idea when we slurp is bringing air inside of our mouth to not get burned. But also because it will come inside of our mouth in way of a spray or a splash. So, our tongue has taste receptors. On the tip, we feel the sweet flavors. In the middle, the salty, and on the back, the bitter. So, the idea is that we slurp and you tell me where these coffees taste in your top. Okay? Let's do it. You can do it like that. Definitely in the back. Too hot? Too hot. Are you okay? It's okay. You guys slurp. You're our family representative coffee expert. How does it taste? It's good. I mean, it's burnt and bitter. What about you? Very oh. and bitter. Okay, really rich. Say it again. Yes, like really ah. on the back. On the back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I feel a little bit on this on the tip and Me then too. close to the back. Me too. And it's it's totally fine. There's no wrong answers because the climate, what you ate it this morning before during uh, doing the tour, and even bubble gum, and your mood will change the flavor. It doesn't mean that if it tastes bitter, you're bitter. Okay. <laughs> Now, I got Okay, acidity is like when we try a lemon or a lime in our mouth, gets watery, right? That's acidity. So we're gonna slurp again and see how watery your mouth gets here on the side. Oh my god, it's really watery. <sighs> Cheers. Cheers, Sailor. Thank you very much. Cheers, as cool as that farm is, sadly, it's just a research farm and all the coffee grown on the, that farm stays on that farm for that Starbucks location. So you can't get it anywhere else in the world. The Starbucks coffee served in the US and the other locations around the world is using coffee that is grown very different than the coffee grown at Alsacia. And all of this leads to why I don't drink Starbucks. One is that it's not organic coffee and they don't use sustainable farming practices. So the coffee beans are sprayed with pesticides and coffee is one of the most contaminated uh, crops around the world. And two, all these drinks that they have, the frappuccinos, the macchiatos, all of those that use those syrups contain a lot of synthetic ingredients and all of those can cause gut inflammation. And if you're someone that's already sensitive to those things, that is really not good to be continuing to put that in your body. Three, most of their drinks are loaded with sugar and we all know that sugar is not good for you. Number four is the price. Like even if you get just a regular black cup of coffee, you're not gonna get out of there for less than $3. And some of them cost as much as like five, six or $7, which is really not economical. 
And lastly, their beans are not roasted on site. And yes, I know they have a couple locations where they do roast on site, but the vast majority is not roasted on site. And you want beans that have been roasted recently because as soon as they're roasted, they lose their aroma and their flavor. And also all those good antioxidants that come from your coffee, those start to degrade as you roast them. So what kind of coffee do I drink? Well, I prefer organic, small batch roasted coffee that I know where it comes from. And Moose Run Coffee is an example of one of the organic, small batch roasted coffees that I enjoy. And about a year and a half ago, Mike and I met this amazing couple that started this brand of coffee. Hello, my name is Matthew but everybody calls me Moose. And I'm Samantha, and we are Moose Run Coffee. I love coffee. I have a, a, a big passion for it. Ever since I was like 12, drinking coffee in church, I'd have like two giant cups of coffee. <laughs> My parents didn't like it. And fast forward like 20 some years, I had a uh, kind of a midlife crisis. I didn't know what to do with my life. I was uh, a mailman at the time and uh, didn't want to retire doing that. So uh, I started uh, just thinking, what do I have a passion for and what do I like to do? And that kind of just coincide with coffee. So we bought a little roaster, a little mm -hmm. popcorn rotisserie roaster. Yep. So yeah, it started out as a... Uh, a hobby. Mm -hmm. I roasted it just because I got tired of spending so much money at Dunkin Donuts and Starbucks and all that. So in order to sustain that coffee drinking, <laughs> <laughs> we decided to start roasting our own and I roasted my first batch and it was a little not very good. <laughs> but the second batch, uh, it hit the spot. Mm -hmm. uh, it was really, really good. And then I, r I ran out of coffee. And then mm -hmm. I went back to Dunkin' Donuts, and it's terrible. <laughs> There's nothing like uh, fresh roasted coffee. As Matthew was roasting his own coffee, he discovered it was something that he was passionate about. But this came at a time when... Ah. Everybody went crazy, and then we realized, oh crap, there's no food on the shelves. Yeah, the pandemic hit, and then the store shelves were empty <laughs> of everything, including toilet paper. We were in upstate New York and it was empty of everything that we needed mm -hmm. within like an hour radius. Um, and I think that was about the same time that we had first discovered Mike and Lacey. Yes. Um, we started watching Mike's videos and with the food system so fragile, like mm -hmm. we really appreciated what he was doing on his... Uh, his farm and it kind of grew on me and we started our own garden mm -hmm. we and were gonna do the same because yeah. they said that they did theirs and had like a little garden and some stuff mm -hmm. in their little house in town yep. and so we thought hey we have a town like a little house in town around mm -hmm. the edge of the city limits we have like seven acres we could totally do something yeah so we started with a, a garden mm -hmm. and then got that set up and then we wanted chickens <laughs> yeah we wanted chickens I wanted chickens so bad there were no eggs were no eggs and they were yeah. so expensive when I could find them. Wow, it's such an honor to know that we have inspired them. It's always interesting to hear about that. And it's touching to also hear why Matthew felt like he connected with our videos. You had tried to watch other homesteaders and things, but there was something about Mike and Lacey specifically yeah. that you just, you, you didn't miss a video for a long time. Yeah, the, um, they're real real people real life they don't try to hide everything um it's not all fun and you know pampered i don't know how you play it like no, yeah. like a persona you know the persona wasn't there it was just real mm -hmm. so we started watching his videos and then we decided we wanted to do the same but then just like we were met with hindrances as we were trying to homestead in the city the curries were as well. Then we found out that we weren't allowed to have chickens. On seven acres. So that was kind of the last straw. Kind of. And when we met Matt and Samantha a year and a half ago, they first walked up to us and said, we sold our house because of you guys. And we're like, what? what? 
<laughs> oh, please don't say that. Oh, but then they explained they sold their house, they bought an RV, and they traveled around the U.S. looking for property to buy, somewhere to settle. And after all the states that they visited, they settled on Missouri, and they love it there. But we all have to make a living, right? So Matthew decided to tap into his passion for coffee and started Moose Run Coffee. It started with just roasting for ourselves and then roasting for, for friends and family. And then I decided that I really wanted to make it a career choice. Um, so what I did was um, we started the LLC 2022 and started out really slow, um, had a you know, other jobs to supplement. Mm -hmm. And it just slowly grew and grew, got influencers and people to help me uh, reach others with my passion for coffee. And uh, we're all organic. That was very important to us too, because- Why was that so important? Because uh, we had a lot of minor uh, health issues that kind of directed us to be um, organic minded. Something pesticides and stuff, jump yeah. In. Um when we were watching Mike and Lacey, he would talk about Holistic Hilda mm -hmm. and that turned Matthew over onto the podcast of Wise Traditions. Yep. And <laughs> then knowing me and my love for herbalism and for healthier living and more crunchy living, mm -hmm. he was like, hey you might want to listen to this. And so we did. Yep. And we found out shortly thereafter, after an injury from the post office back in New York, that Matthew has a sciatic nerve problem. Yep. And if he has genetically modified foods or heavily sprayed and chemicalized yeah. foods, um, it inflames his nerve and makes it hard for him to walk. And we found out through that, that coffee is actually what the heaviest yeah. sprayed food item that we are consuming the way that you prepare it it's like just, you're getting all of it <laughs> all of the bad stuff because yeah. you're brewing it with hot water extracting all the oils mm -hmm. that's where it's all stored so so all the normal coffee that anybody drinks mm -hmm. that's not organic you are getting all of those yep. chemicals like straight infused into your system mm -hmm. and we noticed a big difference once we changed from regular coffee to organic oh yeah that he was no longer being he, having issues with his sciatic nerve and being inflamed and so we made the jump with moose we decided if we aren't okay drinking it why would we sell it to other people yeah even though it is cheaper to buy and cheaper to produce way and sell. cheaper yeah so that's why organic is such a big important part for us mm -hmm. because we firmly believe and stand behind the idea that organic is better, at least in this case. Yep. I know you can't do, we can't even do organic in every area. Not no, yet. Not yet. But One um, day. But we pick and choose, right? And this is one of the areas that is really important. It's great to learn that it's not just coffee for the curries. That they want to produce a product that's helpful for other people. And in addition to the health benefits that come from buying from companies like Moose Run Coffee, we also are proponents of supporting small family businesses because that helps to support their family economies and to help families to thrive. And it makes us feel good that we're not supporting these mega corporations, but we are supporting a small family business and helping them just live their life. Uh, we actually took the, the leap of uh, just doing this as uh, an income um, mm -hmm. it, it pays the bills um, but it's it's crazy to think that it was my dream to do that and then now it's reality so mm -hmm. it's like oh my word if don't mess it up <laughs> <laughs> so we've, we've been working hard and if you want to support a local coffee roaster in your area Matt gives some great advice on what to look for uh, definitely go with your local uh, roasters, um, the ones that are you know small. They have their own in-house uh, roaster. That's where you want to go. That's where you're going to get good coffee. Um, try to go organic. That way you're not getting that glyphosate in your coffee. You could buy a roaster and roast it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun. 
yeah, there's a lot a lot of good resources. Uh, Sweet Maria's um, that um, I think it's SweetMaria's.com. Um, they are a good resource for uh, home roasting and stuff like that. Uh, we roast on two sample roasters. It's just two little two pound roasters. Mm -hmm. um, so they don't really roast a ton at once. So it's two order, you know. Yeah, which is really not good. Not sitting on the shelf for months and months. No. I don't, I'm looking at our shelves and we just have boxes. We don't have, yeah. we don't have actual coffee nope. bags here because we literally roast it. company that has um, really good relationships with the farmers. They're working on their fair trade certified, but there's a lot of red tape with that. Um, but they have really good relationships. They build up the community that are, that's roasting coffee. So unlike the normal system of coffee, where you would have somebody, the manufacturer, who gets the beans from wherever, and then roasts it, and then ships it off to be labeled and packaged, or yeah. And then it sits on shelves or in trucks for a while. Yeah. Ours is a little different in the sense that we have one middleman mm -hmm. and they get it directly from the farm. We buy directly from that company. They ship it to us yep. and we are the ones that we roast it, we grind it, we package it, whether it's K-cups or packaged coffee, and then we ship it out. And so it's not sitting on shelves. It's not getting yep. old and gross. And yeah. It retains the freshness. But we, since we roast to order, you're getting it like three to four days after I roasted it. Yeah. However long it takes to, to get to you in the, in the mail. So that's our story of Moose Run Coffee. And if you have any questions, um, my website, uh, mooseruncoffee.com, there's a little tab, uh, Talk to Moose, or the uh, chat, Drive Her Crazy. Um, midnight okay. is perfect. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but not perfect. But normal business hours would be great. I appreciate that. But if, yeah, if you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out. We would love to answer them. Mm -hmm. Moose obviously has a passion for coffee and yes. making sure that your coffee is as good as it can be. Yes. And you can order some freshly roasted organic Moose Run coffee. All you have to do is click the link in the show notes below. Also, we're going to be giving away a Moose Run coffee bundle. So make sure you subscribe to this channel and click on the notification bell to make sure you are notified each time I release a video, do a new post, because I'm going to be posting really soon about the giveaway. See you next time. Cheers. <laughs>